Good morning, good morning to my YouTube family. Ooh, I woke up to some crazy, crazy news. I'm about to, I'm about to get ready to go to the gym and uh, come back and take some classes that I'm taking. I'm working on getting some licenses that I'll, you know, be letting you guys know about as you see about my um, career change and everything that I have going on. It has been crazy. Everything that's been going on. Oh, I know I got my hair pulled back. I know my head looking super big, but y'all know I had my little corn roll, so I got it pulled back like a little pony because I'm about to go get my workout on. But I had just saw, it had to be on Instagram or Twitter. And they were just on there saying, man, they got R. Kelly and... This day in the third, and Chris Brown, he about to be next. Whoop de whoop. And so I understood conspiracy theorists as far as it's concerned because trouble has really plagued Chris Brown throughout his whole career. And I'm going to tell you, I have a real soft spot for Chris because we're both Tarses, as I do with a lot of Tarses, Meek Mill, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, those are just two of the younger artists that have come into certain kind of troubles that I can relate to. And we share the same Zodiac sign because Tarses are very strong, very stubborn. You know, we are very stubborn. I mean, but we good people, we loyal, and we make our mistakes. And it might be hard for us to admit to them at times. You know, even, you know we, we might buy you a gift or do something like that to make up for any kind of hurt or harm that we might have caused because it does happen, okay? But at the core of us, we are truly, truly good people. And I didn't think anything of it. They were like, yeah, Chris Brown, he next. Because I'm like, Chris Brown, he's gotten in so much trouble and had to pay so much and has had to sacrifice so much, you know? And I'm like, right now, all he's been doing is making music, uh, being a father to his daughter. You know, he even turned around and went ahead and um, upgraded his baby mama. You know, he had some issues with her as far as how, the, you know, the baby was conceived and everything, which we all know. If you get got for a check, guys, that's really on you at the end of the day because... A woman could lie and tell you she's on birth control. A woman could lie and tell you she can't get pregnant. You know, but if you're a millionaire, you really have to understand you are a target because women have children by men that are completely broke. And when I say broke, I'm talking about don't have a car, don't have nothing going on for themselves. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the things, that's one of the issues that I really have, you know, with black men, especially here in Memphis. Um... Just a short story about it, a situation that I that I was in. I had really fallen for this person um, that I used to work work with, and I thought everything was all good. And as we started to see each other outside of work, it was always, you know, I can't wait to see you and this, that, and the third. And so it was always me going to his career. Then he told me. One day, uh, London and I were in Kroger, I'll never forget, and we were on the phone talking, and I'm like, you know, if you want to see me, then you can make that happen, you know, because it, it had always been one-sided on my part, me always going to his place. It had always been one-sided. This man bumped up and told me, I don't have a car right now, this is it. What? Oh, my God. Okay, I got so upset about, not just upset, but I was so taken aback. I was like, okay, we'll have to reconvene this conversation, you know, after the fact. Well, my cousin, she worked with us too. And so she got, she went on to tell me about, you know, how different women and things like that had been dropping them off. And, you know, one of my other girls said she had saw them like catching the bus and things to that nature. Oh, it made me so sad because I was like, man. You know, because in my day, when we were like 16, that was one of the first things the guys did. Guys did. You know, I went to Whitehaven, but, you know, back then in that day, that was the first thing a guy did was got a car. Because, you know, it was like, how am I going to get a girlfriend? How am I going to take her out? How am I going to be able to lay up and lay around with her if I don't even have transportation? And as you guys can see, more and more men are walking. They're using their girls' cars. We saw it on the movie Baby Boy. You know, it, it, it was damn near like Baby Boy set a trend. Like, hey, 
You don't have to have a car. Girls are so desperate. You know, all you got to do is have lay around with them real good. And then you can ride in their cars. You know, I really, I really implore black men to really step up. Why y'all walking? Why y'all walking? Why y'all depending on a woman to get you some wheels? Man, my, my, my guy friend, 16, 17 years old, they used to get a frame of a car and put that thing together. Boy, I'm talking about wood grain steering wheels, put them a radio system in there. <laughs> they used to put them a whole car together, which I know is most definitely possible. It could happen today if black men step up to the plate. Because y'all got to understand, you guys are being attacked like, like none other, like never before. And for you guys to sit around here and be slovenly and lazy... Doing nothing but depending on a woman and the government to take care of you is really sick and sad. And I feel bad for any woman that will lay next to a man that's not contributing anything to the household. But the pain. This is a family channel, so you know I got to keep it clean. But come on, ladies. Stop it. I remember they had that movie Spike Lee made about Chicago and Nick Cannon. Everybody was in it. And I remember, you know, one of the things that they were saying, withhold the vagina. If y'all if y'all man not working, if he's not helping you, if y'all laying up broke and you stressed out about the light bill, why are you laying? Why what's the purpose of having a mate if they're not contributing anything to your household? And like I told you, as men, no no matter how you grew up, even if your mama raised you to never take out the trash, understand at the end of the day you're a man. You got other young men out here looking looking up to you. Y'all setting the stage for the future, for the next generation. So I really implore black men to step up because you guys are being attacked. Y'all being shot. Y'all being killed. You guys are being deemed as worthless. And what's so sad about it, there are very few men that are stepping up to even stand for something. And then the ones that's out here making it, boy, they trying to tear them down at a record rate. This is crazy. That was my little spiel I wanted to give about, you know, me and, and like I told you, myself as a woman, as a, you know, a career woman, a woman that's done well for herself, college educated, has, you know, I've done well for myself in life. I even fell victim to that, but I was really surprised because I couldn't believe that my coworker, you know, like I told you, I had really ended up catching feelings for this dude. And, you know... We end up falling out and having fallen out because I was expecting him to do something for me that he wasn't willing to do for himself. I was telling London there yesterday, it's like, why would I want you to get a car, get a transportation and do better for yourself so you can pick me up and take me out when you really should want to be able to do that for yourself? It's like, why would, I, why would I expect you to do something for me that you don't even have the wherewithal or the drive to do for yourself? You cool with bombing rides. When I had told one of these other guys that was interested in me, he knew that he and I were seeing each other. And like he said, man, that man just, he's sliding from passenger seat to passenger seat. He don't even have any footing in the world. You know what I mean? Like, Shanti, how you dating a dude that's sliding around from one passenger seat to the next? This man don't even have any footing. And the guy friend that was dating, that I was trying to, you know, that was trying to get up with, with me and knew about this guy. You know, he wasn't just tearing them down, but see, this guy here had a nice Mercedes and, you know, all kinds of hustle. He flipped cars and so he had like a Mercedes and a truck and some other little stuff going on. And he's like, bro, why are you even entertaining the dude that don't even have wheels, that don't even have footing out here in the world? He's sliding from one passenger seat to the next or borrowing some girl car that he's laying, laying up with just to use her for her material things. Some women like that because some women feel like, you know, if I'm driving, if, if he got my car, then I can keep tabs on him. And, oh, that is so stupid because, like I told you, I'm a baby boy. If you didn't notice, you letting him drive your car. He's picking up other women. That's the Okay, those are the girls he's telling he got a car. You know what I mean? <laughs> while he in your car, while you working all day, and he riding around, you, he got your wheels. He picking you up and dropping you off. He being the housewife, basically. Nine times out of ten, he using your car to take other girls out on dates because there's some women he don't even want to know that he does not have wheels. You know, the, the, the guy, oh my gosh, I was so crazy about this guy, you guys. But I cannot enable lackadaisical 
slovenly behavior from a from a man. Not at all. A man's job is is to protect and provide. And if you can't do that, if he's not doing that for you, I'm sorry. He has no business around you and your children. And so let's talk about some successful black men and how they're being attacked right now. Back to my boy, Chris Brown. My mother and I, we all have loved Chris because we, we've all seen him. Everybody has. We've all seen him grow up in front of the cameras. We've seen this dancing, dancing baby. You know what I'm saying? Handsome. Sorry about that. I got a call. <laughs> but we've seen this handsome, handsome, cutie pie. Super talented. We have seen this boy go through so much. He lost the first love of his life, Rihanna. You know, the media and everybody, you know, they, they got to fighting in the car. And we both know that they were hitting each other because Chris was cheating. You know, certain things that came out, Chris was cheating. You know, kind of almost like the Salon Jay-Z situation. You know, they had just at the party, ain't no telling what had happened. You know, jump offs and side cheeks, they get a little loose at the mouth. They get a little loose in their actions, you know. Something probably happened, piece of Rihanna off, they got into it. No one knows what truly happened in that car but them. But we both know licks were passed. Don't try to act like Rihanna just sat there and was a whipping board. No, she got her a few in too. But as women, we know we can't beat no man up. So, you know, hence how everything went down. I remember one time... <laughs> I remember one time I tried to pop my ex. Oh my gosh, we were, I think we were in Atlanta. Cause we used to travel a lot. And <laughs> I had gotten so mad at him, you know what I'm saying? I was ready to get with him. So we in the room, whatever. So I'm ready to square up, soldier boy style. Like, you know, I'm trying to square up. Like, I'm squaring up with the camera. So I'm ready to, like, go and pop him. Pow. So I'm ready to go and hit him. He, he looked at me. This boy about 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, he looked at me, Shanti, you know you can't win. I bagged down. I was like, damn. Because <laughs> he was not lying. You feel me? He just gave me that look. He, he wasn't violent with me. He never was hitting on me or abusive towards me on a physical aspect. But when I was trying to swing on him that day, that night or that evening or whatever in that hotel room, golly, that boy looked at me, Shanti. You're not going to win. Bag down immediately. <laughs> okay, so back to my boy Chris Breezy. I got to do this right, like Soldier Boy. Rape. 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 Really? Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. Just last week. And I was just looking yesterday on Shade Room or... Ball alert, one of the Instagram um, gossip sites. And he was partying with his, you know, his Paris Fashion Week going on. Um, it's this glow-in-the-dark Louis bag that I absolutely love and adore. But walking around with a glow-in-the-dark Louis bag in Memphis is next level. So, you know, that's why I was like, uh, you know, as far as a lot of the, um, the gear that I rock and stuff like that, a lot of, a lot of it is for out of town. It's kind of, it's kind of next level as far as Memphis is concerned. Cause we just got, um, a Nordstrom rack, not even a real Nordstrom. So, you know, you can kind of tell about the revenue, by the kind of stores and stuff like that, that we have. A lot of us have to travel out of town and shop online in order to get our luxury goods. You know, Oak Hall is here. Oak Hall is, is a staple in the community, but, you know, there are a lot of other stores that I like to shop at, Bloomingdale's. I like to shop at the actual real Nordstrom. I like to shop at the actual... Um, you know, Saks Fifth Avenue and things like that for, you know, your designer gear. But Paris Fashion Week going on. And so they were just showing pictures of Chris and his girlfriend. He has a new young lady that he's been hanging out with. And so they were comparing her to Karuchi. Because they were saying, oh, she looks just like Karuchi, this, that, and the other. And we know that Karuchi was like the love of his life. After the Rihanna situation, he really loved Karuchi because Karuchi tried to hold him down. She even settled with being second place when he went back to Rihanna. She even settled for that and was still there for him throughout all the court stuff, throughout all the craziness. But when he had that baby on her, as you guys know, those are two like deal breakers in relationships. A baby and an STD. Those are two deal breakers. You know what I'm saying? That's like, oh, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you can, you can deal with the cheating. You can deal with stuff like that. 
But when it, when you have a baby on me, oh, then it was somebody the girl knew because they had all of them on a picture together. She jumped ship. And so, you know, as we all knew, it was kind of hard for him to get over there. But now he's moved on. He's been very low key. He's just been making music. And no lie, London was bumping it the other day. She said one of her girlfriends, CC, really loves Chris Brown, as a lot of us do. And so the song called Undecided. And I really love the song. I've been playing it. I'm going to play it when I go to the gym just to stream for him and try to show him some support in what he's going through. So long story short, they were just showing pictures. So it was on Facebook or Twitter. It was on one of the social media platforms. And somebody had just said, you guys, and this is no lie. Somebody had just said, boy, they got R. Kelly. You know, they got all these prominent black figures. Chris Brown just became the youngest artist to own all his masters. As you all know, by Michael Jackson, Prince, you know, a lot of our deceased superstars, a lot of them were having issues with the fact that they owned their masters. Michael Jackson even owned the Beatles masters. So you can imagine the money involved when you own your own music and it's on all streaming platforms and it's getting turned on every, and, and, and on, it's relapsing every hour on the radio station and every DJ that plays it, you're getting money for it. And every show that you do, you're getting 100% of the proceeds from it because you own your own music. You know, you might have a label that's pressing them out for you, which uh, Chris Brown is with RCA. But they were saying that he became the youngest performer to ever own his own masters. This was like a week or two ago. And here today, he's now been accused of rape. Chris Brown has now been accused of rape, you guys. This young man has faced so much trouble. This boy has been to jail. This boy has been to rehab. This boy had a side baby and lost a girl that he loved more than anything. And this boy has just been laying low, raising his daughter, loving up on this baby girl, taking care of his mother, which he always has. Kicking it with his girlfriend in Paris. And you know, you never know. They might have invited the girl up for a threesome or something. You know, they turn up when you got money like that. You know, and we know, and we've all known he's had problems with substance abuse as well. Because living in Hollywood, it's hard to, it's hard to not be subjected. You gotta, you gotta have a really, really, really strong mind. It's hard to not be subjected to the temptations um, that are presented to you when you have an overabundance of money. You're young, you know, you got friends that are doing it and they saying, oh, it's so cool. You know, this, that, and the third. And you tried all the rappers, they talking about it. They doing it. A lot of the rappers, a lot of the washed up rappers, from what I've heard through the grapevine, and I, you know, I have friends in the industry and things like that. Through I heard a lot of the uh, washed up rappers are the dealers and stuff now. Like when it happened with Demi Lovato, they said the person that survived that um that um had given her the drugs that she OD'd on was an old artist that, you know, was no longer really selling music but had gotten into the drug the drug trade and was out in Hollywood making ends meet by being a supplier. Anyway, they had just said that Chris Brown was next. Rape is a serious thing. I'm a woman. I have been subjected to things to, of that nature, which I, you know, as my as my podcast, I mean, as my YouTube channel grows, I'll be more open, and I have other women on that can speak about, you know, what I'm saying sexual assault and things like that because we just saw what happened in Opera Nightclub in Atlanta with the young lady out turning up, taking drinks from everybody, getting drugged, out in the club with no panties on, it bumping and grinding, booty shaking, you showing dudes, letting them know you ain't got nothing on. He got a pocket full of pills or molly or whatever he had, snuck it on in a drink and ramrodded her right in the middle of the club. For one, she didn't have on any panties. And she was dancing with so many guys, she was on live. You know what I'm saying? And she was... You know, it, it was it was crazy. And there was a lady that was married. I don't know what was, she said. Her relationship status was complicated or something like that. I'm not sure her and her husband had, were divorced. But she was a mother. I think she maybe has three children. Jasmine Elin is her name. And I don't want to downplay that. But back in my day, me and my friends looked out for each other. 
you know, no matter what kind of activities we were getting into. Whole activities. <laughs> we always looked out for each other. Boy, I remember one time we were down in uh, Jackson. A group of us had went down to Jackson and met up. And one of my girlfriends, um, she had met up with this dude. She she had been talking to him. And so she got a chance to see him um, doing one of the big games they had down in uh, Jackson. It was Jackson versus Grumbling or, you know, one of those big um, classic games. And I'll never forget. I rolled with her. Some of our other girls like, no, we going back to the hotel. You know, we ready to lay down. You know, we calling it the night. But she wanted to go see this dude. I went with her. And no lie, I sat up there and slept, slept on a couch in some kind of trap house while she was hanging out with this dude. I went to sleep because we were dead tired. We had been kicking it all day. But I was not going to leave my girl alone. No way. No way, boy. We going down. We going down together. No, the rest of y'all go to the hotel. I'm going with her. We, we, hey, I, I, we got you. That's how we always rocked. Who was she there with? Who was she there with that allowed her to get all these drinks in her system? All these random drinks. The thing about it, if you ever do go buy you a drink, stand at the bar with them. Don't let him go, go to the bar and get the drink while you stand up there dancing with no panties on. Go to the bar with him and get your drink with him while you're standing there. That way you can avoid putting drop pills all in her drink and she ain't even know it. Rick Ross crawl. Put Molly all in her drink and she ain't even know it. Avoid it by being more aware. And surrounding yourself with a better circle. But lastly about this Chris Brown thing. Another instance where the young lady came to the hotel room. Another instance when the young lady came to the hotel room. Really? We we still doing that? Okay. Let's use our common sense. We at a party. We meet a celebrity. We all turning up. The bottles are flowing because when you're a millionaire, endless bottles, endless drugs, endless weed, endless pills. You're a millionaire. You can afford all of that in abundance. That's why a lot of them turn into addicts. But Chris has been so low-key, you guys. He has not wanted to jeopardize anything he ha he's had going on. This boy has been so low-key. Y'all haven't heard anything but music coming from Chris Brown. Nothing but music. He, all he posts, music, his little girl, his mama, hanging out, cars, excess luxury vacations, hanging out with his new boo, the Karuchi lookalike. That's all we've seen from this man. This man don't want no smoke. Y'all think Chris Brown want to go back to jail? Y'all think he want to be away from his little girl and his mama and his riches and the stages, dancing, making money and millions? He just got a deal to own all his masters. Y'all think that Chris Brown was that desperate with a girlfriend with him? Please check it. Google it. You will see the girl. She looked just like Karuchi, maybe a little taller, a little tanner, but she they look very similar, almost her doppelganger. Y'all think that Chris Brown really raped that girl? Think about it. As a woman, if I meet a man at the club and we going into the wee hours of the morning because I've been to clubs, especially like in Miami and stuff like that. You know, Memphis clubs used to close like 2 or 3. But I've been to clubs in New York City. I've been to clubs in Miami and stuff like that. Some of them clubs are breakfast in that thing. That's how, that's how long you're going to be in the club. Some of them, sir, I've eaten breakfast. At the club, because you can party just that hard. That was in my younger days. I know I'm a slick old head. I'm all my, I'll be 40 soon. You know what I'm saying? I'm in my late 30s, bro, so I can't hang out like I used to. But back then, breakfast used to be served at the club. So you meet Chris Brown. All right? He might have his lady friend with him. You know, it's a bunch of groupies or whatever, you know. Because, you know, guys love to have a lot of girls around in the booth, as they should. Because, you know, that's part of the whole party. Looking at a bunch of beautiful women, scantily clad. Some, are, you know, lady light, -like, but everybody got their own flavor. But that's a lot of the reason why they get the tables. And so, you know, you have a lot going on. You have bottles flowing. You have all this stuff happening. Okay. He's about to leave. So, he said, oh, I'm staying at the Chancelizé. Because they said, I forgot the name of the hotel that he was staying in. 
They named it. But they said it was close to um, a Parisian... Um, it was to, to a, uh, a Parisian... Uh, what is it, you guys? Tourist attraction. All right, so... The young lady went to the hotel with them. After the club. Ladies. I just want to know one reason. Just give me one. This, this, I'm not even being difficult. Give me one reason why you would go to a hotel room with a man. After our, our 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, after y'all been clubbing, drinking, drugging, or whatever y'all doing in the club. They smoking weed. Because they smoke weed and everything in the club. Drugs don't always have to be pill popping, ecstasy, molly, you know, Percocets, and all those things. You know, you could just be smoking weed and drinking liquor and getting loose. Sometimes that's all a person needs. A few drinks, a few shots of Patron, a little joint to smoke, and you're ready. For what reason would you go to the hotel room with this man? Two or three o'clock in the morning if it was not to have sex. Why would you think a man would invite you to his hotel room? Why would you think a man would invite you to his hotel room two or three o'clock in the morning if it wasn't to have sex? What what you think what you think Chris Brown wanted with you? That you went back to his hotel room. But anyway, that's the question I got for you. But I want to end this. I want to end this because you know, as the as the case, you know, it just happened. You know, they just arrested him yesterday. The news just broke this morning. But like I told you guys, I had just saw, I had just saw it on social media. Chris Brown, this, they keep that boy on the radar. Jesus Christ, they are determined to destroy that young man. Good Lord, and the thing about it, boy, that's one thing about the Taurus. That's one thing about a bull, boy. Just like with Meek Mill. Boy, we got a back stronger than... Oh, my God. It's hard as hell to break a bull down. I ain't even lying to you. Because they have tried that boy. They have tried Meek Mill. And them boys still standing. They still come back. They go to jail. They do their time. They still come back bumping, making good music, being resilient. As only a true Tarian should. But I'm going to come back after all is said and done as far as this situation, you know, with Chris. You know, um, I'm going to go, I'm, when I get to the gym, I'm going to listen to a little YouTube, listen to some little news stories, and just kind of hear what they're saying as far as that's concerned. But like I told you guys, it, it, it's, it's shady. You just got the rights. You just got all the you, you just got all the rights to your masters, meaning that you're gonna 100 percent own all the music that you make moving forward in life. And what is Chris Brown even 30 yet? So can y'all imagine the kind of money that boy finna be making if he if, if God sees for him to live another 20, 30 years, and he could just at that point just start making music for other artists and sitting back in the studios, you know, because he's he's mastered his art. So he could just sit back. He could do dance class. There's a lot of things that Chris can do, you know, as he grows older. And just watch how that money and those residuals just keep rolling in. Wow. That's crazy. That was crazy news to hear this morning. I'm not lying to you. Because like I told you, they refuse to give that boy a break. Man, Chris Brown can give somebody a piece of his kidney. And they will find a reason to try to tear that boy down. Jesus Christ. He right, He went to Paris. Not in his California home. He went to another country. Invited a girl to his room. With his girlfriend. With him. And said. Hey. I'm finna rape her as soon as I get to the room. I'm finna take some. Ah, oh, she gonna go to the room with me. Alright. I'm finna rape her. Yeah. Ooh, she's so she the most beautiful girl I ever seen. Even though Chris Brown got beautiful women across the globe that he even slept with and got access to. He said, Ooh, this girl here's so bad. Ooh, she the coldest thing I ever seen. I can't wait to get her back to the room to rape her. Stop it. Here I go with that again. Stop it. Quick money grab. Just like with Nelly. 
Oh, Nelly raping now. Boy, y'all see how fine Nelly is. We went to a show. I'm going to say this, Nelly and Andy. I remember one day me and Mark, Nelly came to Memphis. That's back when Memphis was really popping and artists used to come to Memphis all the time. A lot of times they bypass us and go to surrounding cities, you know, because they don't view us as a uh, viable market. So a lot of the shows we go to are in other city, Atlanta, Nashville, stuff like that. We got to travel uh, to go to a lot of these big shows. But back then they used to come to town. I always tell people Nelly had some of the most beautiful diamonds I have ever, had ever seen. You can see it from where me, where we were in the in the club that he, uh, that he was performing at. It was this big, beautiful club at the end of Bill Street. I forgot the name of it. It was back in the day. Nelly Ice was so blinging, y'all. You can see it from one end of the club to the next. That's how on, that's how iced out this boy we is and fine as hell. True, there are good guys that are sick that are rapists. I'm not I'm not condoning rape. Like I told you, I, as a woman, we've all been subjected to abuse from men, from men, men trying to take something from us. And I've most definitely been a victim of all of those things, which I told you I will talk about later. But we have to be more mindful of the situations we put ourselves in than your lady in Atlanta. You were drinking, you were taking drinks from every man in that club. You was bumping and grinding and booty shaking. You videotaped the whole thing. You were on live. And you had on a dress and you were letting people see that you didn't have on underwear. That's crazy. And then where were your friends, bro? Your friends should have been with you, pulling your dress down, telling you to get it together, sit down for a minute. When, they, when your friends start seeing you getting too drunk, it's time to go. You see some people carrying their friends out the club drunk as hell. Those are the kind of friends you need to avoid those kind of situations. But let's just see how this Chris Brown thing plays out. Let's see how it plays out, you guys. Yeah, let's see if they got them. Because, you know, they will sick somebody on you. You know, they, they hey, a girl will get paid to be the baddest thing in the club. And they'll say, hey, we'll pay you umpteenth amount of dollars. Get up, place you over there by Chris Brown. Get you all up on them. Let them know you open, that you want to get with them. You down for whatever. He invites you back to the room. You get all the evidence you need in your panties or whatever, you know. You get your little sperm residue and all that stuff, and then bam, I got enough evidence to call right. It's crazy, but it's true. You guys, I'm going to keep you posted on it. You know, I did want to get up and talk about this this morning because, like I told you, it was I was mind blown because they had just said, I don't know what made somebody say that. Chris Brown next. And then, just like clockwork, he he raped a girl in Paris. With a, and he has a daughter and a mother that he loves dearly. But now Chris has decided to go from beating women to now raping them in hotel rooms. I need men to stand up, you guys. Y'all, you, oh my God, some of you guys are being so disappointing to us as, as women, as black queens. You guys really aren't living to be uh, up to be a king. Like I told you, you know what I'm saying? Some of you guys are out here living so sorry. You know, you guys are dependent. You guys don't want to work. From what I've heard, they say the majority of the warehouses in Memphis are filled with women. I really implore you. I really, I really, 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 really hope. You know what I'm saying? I really, I'm really pushing for you guys. And I really hope that you guys, you know, decide to step up. And I really, I have to call out the women too. Why y'all not, why y'all not allowing y'all men to step up? Why y'all not pushing them to step up to strive toward greatness? You know, it starts at home. It starts with our young men. Hey, make them check out the trash and give them responsibility so that they can understand their male roles as a male. Y'all making them so feminine. Y'all got these little boys in there and all y'all doing is hollering and crying about a man and what he ain't doing for you. And these men, these little boys growing up to be just like women. Men need to step up. If you see shortages, even, our, you know, men that are educators, uh, political, uh, political figures in the community, all of you guys need to step up and help out our young black boys because they are under attack and they are not living up to their full potential. Peace and blessings. I'm on my way to the gym, and like I told you, I'm about to come back and work on some of my licenses that I'm um, that I am uh, pursuing. 
you know, but I got, I got to get a good workout in because I'm fired up. And so I know that this little run and this little jog is most definitely going to help me, you know. I love you all. Peace and blessings. Ah. <laughs> Peace and blessings. Here go my sugar, y'all. Mm -hmm. And thank you to my boy Breezy for my intro and my little outro that he made for me. Thank you so much. Here goes some sugar. Mm -hmm. My phone fell. It's broke.